Dear Chairman, thank you for the invitation to present at the EBC meeting 2021. My title of my talk is Very Late Stent Thrombosis in Osteobifurcation Lesions, Correlation of Computer Tomographic Imaging with Histology. These are my disclosures. Now, I'd like to start with where do atherosclerosis form in bifurcation sites. As shown here many years ago, the sites marked with the red line, A, B, C, and D, are the regions where atherosclerotic plaques form. But on the other hand, E, G, and F, that is the region of the carina, is spared from any lesion formation. As you can see in the next, I'm going to show you when stents are deployed in these regions, what happens. As you can see here, we have shown that in stents where stent are more likely to form thrombosis are, if you look at neointimal thickness, it is the least in the flow divider region as compared to lateral. If you look at struts with fibrin, more likely to see at the bifurcation, at the flow divider rather than at the lateral wall, and uncovered struts are more commonly seen at the carina as compared to the uh, lateral wall, that is flow dividers. Now, these are the common techniques used for implanting stents. We know that one stent only has the best results. However, there are lesions in which we cannot de deploy just one stent, and we need to deploy two stents, and there are various techniques, and obviously you know more than even I do on these techniques. I'm going to concentrate on what happens when we put in a stent. Here is a bifurcation lesion that we recently reported that showed very late thrombosis in the osteobifurcation lesion assessed by micro CT. A 74 year old man, five years after drug looting stent implantation into the LAD, had very late stent thrombosis caused by the struts protruding into the ostium of the left circumflex that remained bare, that remained uncovered. As shown in this, micro CT is shown on the right. The radiographic images shown on the left, you can see how clear the images of micro CT are. You can see the bend at the ostium of the left circumflex of the struts, in this case, Endeavor. And you can see here the area highlighted here at the bifurcation showing thrombus in the ostium of left circumflex, and the red uh, arrows point to that area. And you can see the thrombus very clearly in the histology and again showing the cross section of that lesion showing the circumflex and this is where the number of stats are there you find the site of where thrombosis occurs is at the ostium now i put together this uh, features of the left main stenting at the bifurcation this is a paper we wrote some time ago and we had a total of 35 stents that were deployed at the bifurcation Struts that stents that failed were 54% as compared to patent stents, which are 46%. And I'm going to show you the various techniques that were used, that are used commonly, and showing what happens in them, what are the underlying causes of thrombosis. As shown here, here is a single strut. You can see single stent, and at the bifurcation, there is, you can see that there is, at the bifurcation, thrombus formation in the circumflex. On the right side is shown a kissing lesion, the left anterior descending, and the left circumflex. And again, because there are so many struts in the osteal region, you, that leads to stent thrombosis, as shown in these pictures. Now, here is an example of a crush technique, and this has led to the formation of stent thrombosis purely because of malapposition. And the struts are shown in red. As you can see, they are malaposed. There's an underlying plaque, and you can see here again, malopause strut and luminal thrombus. So this led to malapposition occurred during crush stenting. Here's another example, different example of uncovered struts that may also lead to stent thrombosis, and you, the asterisk points to all these uncovered struts. This was occurred 18 days after implantation in the left main circumflex and left anterior descending artery, and you can see the thrombus formation. Now you can also get protrusion of a necrotic core into the lumen as shown here. You can see 
This is a patient who had endeavor stent implanted in the left anterior descending and diagonal branch, four days post PCI for acute myocardial infarction. The necrotic core is protruding into the lumen and that led to the thrombus formation. Now here we show the major causes of timing and for the stent thrombosis. In the early time point, less than 30 days, you can see there were 10 cases. And in the later time point, there were uh, four cases, 31 to 365 days, and greater than 365 days for another four stents. The main causes of thrombosis was malapposition, struts in crossing of, of side branches, and protrusion of those struts into the lumen and uncovered struts, and of course, the hypersensitivity can also lead to stent thrombosis. Here are two examples that I'm going to show you in recent cases that we've done micro, micro CT. There's an 89-year-old male with multiple stents uh, in the proximal left anterior de descending six years after implantation. This is to show you the area of the bifurcation. You can again see the stent. You can see the calcium. This is micro CT showing the images longitudinal cut. You can see the calcium very clearly. And this is where we did at the bifurcation site. You can see the stent in and showing you cross section. You can see the thrombus in the lumen side of it and histology to correspond with it. The next case is a 67-year-old male with non-ST elevation MI and Zion stent was implanted in the proximal left anterior descending artery 1.5 years after implantation. And you can see this is a fairly successful stent and the struts are covered, although they are present. Why did they not thrombose? Probably because of anticoagulation. And also it could be that the patient, these struts are further apart than would normally be, and if they were equally distributed, you can see that they are covered with new intima, and that the side branch remains patent, as shown here in the histology, as well as in the micro CT images. You can see this is with calcification. We can remove the calcium and show you the distorted shape at the site of the bifurcation itself. So in conclusion, the main cause of bifurcation stenting was stent failure or thrombosis from strut and ostia side branch, malapposition, uncovered strut protrusion, necrotic core, and hypersensitivity. Micro CT with higher resolution than clinical CT has been explored for the study of coronary atherosclerosis, and micro CT is useful to assess details in three dimension for strut positioning that lead to stent failure, especially as a tool for bifurcation lesions. Thank you so much.